Hey, it's Levi here. So I'm in my car right now and I've been having some ignition issues last few days. Uh, the key basically stopped turning and um, I went through a little bit of kind of looking around, seeing if I can get like a locksmith to come uh, fix this for me. And I only got one quote, but it's 450 bucks and they were gonna like replace the whole uh, ignition assembly and give me like one new key and optimally I don't want to have to do that because then my exterior key my ignition key and trunk key will be different and I don't really want that unless I absolutely need to do that so I was like okay screw that I'm gonna just try it myself so if you look on YouTube or whatever car you have you can find like tutorials people disassembling things and showing like how to repair stuff so I started basically cutting into it a little bit. So I took apart my uh, ignition column and I actually just made uh, the biggest breakthrough that I've been trying to make and that is removing removing the lock cylinder. So I'm, I'm like over the moon about this. I finally got this out. So I'll show you a little bit of kind of what we've got here. So I had to take this all apart and the lock cylinder was in there and I had to do some drilling. I saw two different methods. One where you drill alongside here and one where you drill this way. I started drilling this way because I thought it'd be better. Uh, it didn't end up working so I had to drill up both directions and then I got myself a pick set and uh, started uh, kind of getting that pin. So this, there's a pin in here that holds this assembly together in there like that. So I had to remove the pin. I finally got that out. Now I'm going to take this apart and try to remove the wafer that was wrong. And I'm at the point with this where like worst case, if I totally mess this up and I can't do it, then I can hire a mechanic or a locksmith or order a new part or whatever. But I'm like, my car is super old. I don't really think it's worth the money, like 450 bucks, man. I can put that towards tires or like actually, you know, stuff that is actually imperative to safety with a vehicle. Whereas this is like, oh yeah, I mean, of course you can't run the vehicle without it. So anyways, with this thing, I got a pick set. I'm gonna use the 90 degree angle pick. And what you gotta do, apparently, this pin needs to come out, right? And it's a big, uh, you know, conundrum, but basically, with this pick, hopefully, I can get that pushed out. And it turns out it's actually, it's in there pretty tight. Oh, there we go, cool. So I pushed it out, heard it kind of snap there, and it didn't break, no, it's fine. But heard that noise of it dislodging, and then I can hopefully pry it out here. Honestly, like me doing this, it's just because I've started watching uh, Lock Picking Lawyer on YouTube. So I definitely don't condone like, you know, trying to be a thief or anything and breaking into stuff. But at the same time, if you know how stuff works and you can fix your own stuff as a result, that's the best case scenario, I'd say. Oh, I just stabbed my fingertip. Yeah, man. So this is bad. And here's another thing. So I bought this uh, titanium drill bit set from Walmart, which is a mistake. Just, you know, already you can tell. <laughs> and basically, uh, they're actually just titanium coated and they break super easily. They're really bad. I've already broken two bits so far. And those are my smallest ones, which I understand. Yeah, that's a thing. So I definitely never buy those bits again. Is it working? There we go. Whoa. That works. Cool. So last night I tried to go out and do this, but I was super sketched out, man. I was like, every car that drives by is probably thinking that I'm trying to steal this car, which I mean, it's my car, but I'm trying to drill into the lock assembly. Like it doesn't look good. And I figured if a cop stopped me, even if I have all this documentation, it's gonna take him a while to investigate. So I'll probably get arrested anyways. <laughs> and then they like, let me go eventually. But whoa, okay. That did something. I don't think it did what I wanted it to, but all right, let's try this again. Hopefully, so this is where, you know, having a vice is good. Oh, there we go. It's getting there. Ooh, I was having some camera issues. The thing wasn't recording. That was really annoying because I'm just trying to get this thing finished. It's, yeah, it's perforating on my safe. So, so cool. Uh, we got something. Something's coming. How about now? Can I pry it out now? 
Oh yeah, I got the pin out. Oh, amazing, okay. All right, so at this point in the game, I've got this part to come out, and now that I've got uh, a pen at my disposal, I can mark the areas so that I know which way it lines up. And so now, essentially, ugh, I can pull this lock apart. I wanna take my key, put this in here, because it helps the wafer stay in place, because I'm gonna remove this sleeve here. Mm, it's being a bit stubborn again. There we go, okay, so this sleeve, and you know, if you're doing this, as everyone says, you wanna be careful that you know the proper orientation, cause it might affect you if, oh yeah, it definitely would affect it if it went in the wrong way. Okay, so from this point now, the whole lock assembly should slide out, and hopefully we'll see the wafer there that is uh, the problematic one, so. That one actually just had a bit of grease on it, but it is kind of stuck in there. So I'll try to grab that out. Mm, did that and unfortunately my camera died there, but essentially I just had to remove the key to get that wafer to pull out. All right, so I reassembled the lock cylinder here, and essentially I just I had to remove one wafer that was in the bottom of the cylinder um, that was stopping it from actually unlocking here. So I'm just gonna demonstrate real quick just to show you that you put the key in, it works now, whereas it didn't work before. So I'm happy with that. Um, so now I just have to basically um, walk 10 minutes to back to the car and try to put this back in and then hopefully the car should start up again. All right, so here we are back in the car. So if my calculations are correct, I can basically reinstall this piece here. There's this little spring that was in the end of this. So I'm just gonna reinstall that spring and then this thing should just slide in here. Now there's supposed to be a pin that holds it all into place, but I'm not gonna install that pin yet. I'm just going to like soft install everything here and see if I get all that just in place, will it go? Amazing, oh my goodness. Oh, that is a relief. Okay, so nice. All right, so this repair took me about a week to to actually get through. So it started acting up on me on Sunday afternoon, and then I kinda got it kinda semi-working. I believe that was on Monday, and I drove it to work on Tuesday thinking, well, if I got it fixed once, maybe I can get it fixed again without taking it all apart, and that didn't work. So Tuesday, Wednesday, started taking it actually apart. Thursday was yesterday. That's when I actually got the, the lock cylinder out, and then I, it was like a really quick fix. Once you get the lock cylinder out and you get into like a decent work environment. So I'm very happy with how this thing turned out so far. Basically, I don't need a new key. I don't need to hire a $500 locksmith to come out and the car still works properly so I'm happy with that so that's it that's it for this video I'm gonna yeah I don't know drive around and charge the battery a bit or something but the car hasn't really ran you know since uh, for about four days and if you're ever in a similar situation like that hopefully this video helps you out and gives you a little bit of confidence to uh, tear into it and figure it out because honestly it's not all that hard yeah you do need some special tools but all this stuff is available at a store like Canadian Tire, Home Depot, auto parts store, stuff, stuff like that. Well, thanks so much for watching. Yeah, if you liked the video, hit the like button down in the corner there. And if you wanna see more of my stuff, hit the subscribe button. And until then, that's it, that's all. Hopefully things hold together for the next little bit. See you next time, everyone.